Python 3.14 is now officially released, and I'd like to share some of my favorite new features. I'm not going to talk about the experimental free threading mode, uh, the just-in-time compiler, or other performance improvements. I'm going to focus on features that you can use right after you upgrade. One of the most immediately visible features in Python 3.14 is all the color. The Python REPL now includes syntax highlighting. When you type code into the Python REPL, it will be colorized as you type it. The Python debugger also gains syntax highlighting in 3.14. So when you're debugging code, whether with a breakpoint call or some other way of entering PDB, your source code will now be colorized. Also, if you've ever wished that Python's unit test module included nicely colored output like PyTest, it does now. Now with unit test, failing tests are red and passing tests are green. And that's not all the color. The arg parse module now also supports colorized help text. Also, the JSON module's command line interface now displays JSON output in color by default. Speaking of the JSON module's command line interface, you can now run it with python-mjson instead of python-mjson.tool. I actually made this tiny change, and it's the first code contribution I've made to Python. It is a very small one, but kind of a neat one. Python 3.14 includes even more improvements to error messages, particularly syntax errors. In previous versions of Python, you'd often get a generic syntax error if you misspelled a Python keyword like import. But in Python 3.14, the error message now suggests the correct keyword instead. Python's error messages have improved a lot in the past few versions, and this is exactly the kind of change that makes Python even more beginner-friendly. Another REPL improvement that I stumbled upon recently while teaching is tab completion of Python imports. When you're in the REPL and you type the import statement followed by the start of a module name and then you hit tab, it auto-completes the module name. This is especially handy for long module names like collections or date time. Python 3.14 also includes a bunch of little improvements to various standard library modules. For example, the arg parse module now includes a suggest on error argument that will suggest corrections when you make a typo in the choices options for a command line argument. Here we're misspelling scissors, and Python's showing us the option that it thinks we meant to type, spelled correctly. One of my favorite features in Python 3.14 is that pathlib.path objects now have copy and move methods. Before 3.14, if we wanted to copy or move a file, we had to use Python's shutil module. But in 3.14, you can just use the move method directly on the path object. There's also a move into method for moving a file into a directory, as well as a copy method and a copy into method. The path class also gained a new info attribute that caches information about whether a path represents an existing file or directory. In 3.14, you can also now parse a date string or a time string directly into a datetime.date object or a datetime.time object. In previous versions of Python, you either needed to use datetime.datetime.sterptime and then extract the date or parse the string manually. But in 3.14, you can just use date.sterptime directly. The date and time classes now have their own sterptime method that works the same way as the datetime classes sterptime method. Python's UUID module now includes UUID 6, 7, and 8 functions. If you're starting a new project and you need to generate UUIDs, I'd recommend taking a look at UUID 7. It has all the pseudo-randomness benefits of UUID 4, but the generated UUIDs are also ordered by their creation time. The sortability of these UUIDs can be really useful for things like database primary keys. Have you ever written code that catches multiple exception types? In previous Python versions, you needed to wrap those exception types in parentheses. In 3.14, you can omit the parentheses and the code still works. This earlier version was a holdover back from the Python 2 days. 3.14 also includes some interesting improvements for concurrent and parallel programming. Concurrent.futures now includes an interpreter pool executor, which spawns a new Python interpreter in a separate thread, but in the same process, and each interpreter has its own global interpreter lock, meaning they can each use separate CPUs if needed. So you kind of get the best of both worlds between multi-threading and multi-processing. Also, if you've ever needed to inspect running async.io tasks, well, you can now do so from the command line. Also, 3.14 now has an external debugger interface that allows you to safely attach debuggers to running Python processes. So you can start a breakpoint from a process that's already running. 
The last thing I'd like to talk about in 314 is a new syntax, t-strings. The t in t-strings stands for template, and unlike f-strings, they don't actually make strings, they make template objects. These template objects allow a utility to pre-process the interpolations within the template in whatever way they'd like before actually making a string. Keep in mind that f-strings are still the go-to string formatting tool. t-strings are really useful for library authors in particular, so you might find yourself soon using a library in Python where a t-string is required and not an f-string because some pre-processing needs to be done in some of your data. I'm planning to release another video all about t-strings soon. If you're excited about syntax highlighting, the new pathlib methods, or anything else that I mentioned, go install Python 3.14 and try it out. And if you want to see everything that's new, go to the What's New in Python 3.14 page in the documentation.